Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how you can find the intersection points of the curves um, created by two sets of parametric equations. Now, um, as you might uh, suspect, the way to find these intersections, it's much easier if you first get their Cartesian equations. If you just look at their parametric equations, it's telling you where they are at a particular, say, time, but it doesn't tell you the whole path. Much better to look at the Cartesian equations. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this um, example where we've got uh, x equals sine of t take two and y equals cos of t plus one as one of your sets of equations. Um, just putting some brackets here. And the other one is x equals t and y equals two t plus one. No, plus two. Um, so uh, if you've been following along, you might realize that that first one looks like it's probably going to be a circle and the second one looks like it's probably going to be a line. But let's uh, work it out, work out the Cartesian equations, and then we can find the intersections of those, um, of those two new equations. So we'll do the first one first, just equation one first, right? Well, the set of parametric equations, one. So first we've got, well, sine of t equal to x plus two and cos of t is equal to y take one. And so now I can use my uh, Pythagorean identity here that sine squared of something, so sine squared of t plus cos squared of that same something, in this case t, is equal to one. Um, and then we just substitute in, so we're, so this, what we've got here, these two equations, they're just sine of t and cos of t. So we're going to need to square both sides to get the things that go in this equation, right? So for sine, it's uh, what, x plus 2 all squared. And y, did, uh, cos, it'd be y minus 1 all squared equals 1. Cool. So now we have a Cartesian equation from the first part of parametric equation. Let's now look at the second one. So the second one is uh, x of t, x equals t and y equals t plus two. That's pretty easy to do. You can just substitute straight away and go the second one is y equals x plus two. How nice. Um, so now that we have our two equations, uh, we just find the intersections as we would normally uh, find the intersections of graphs. So I've got y by itself. So why not substitute in y equals x plus two into that equation for the circle? So I'll just do that here, see if I've got enough room. Uh, plus, so what, it'd be x plus 2 take 1 all squared equals 1. And we get, so it's x plus 2 all squared uh, plus x plus 1 all squared equals 1. Uh, now, if I want to solve this for the intersections, I'm going to have to um, expand. Let's expand first. So we get what x squared plus 4x plus 4, just using my, um, remembering my way to expand binomials, or perfect squares in this case. That all equals 1. So just collecting like terms, I get 2x squared plus 6x plus five, um, but I'm also going to take the one over from the right-hand side. So it's plus five, take one, that's plus four equals zero. All right, um, let's just see if we can remember that and put it onto the next one so that we can solve it. So it was two x squared plus six x plus four. I'm just going to go back and check what well, all equals zero. Check that, make sure I haven't made a big mistake. Oop, no thanks. There we go. 2x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 0. Absolutely. So now when I'm looking at that, I go, oh, well, it looks like everything's got a factor of 2. Why don't I just divide everything by 2, divide both sides by 2. Dividing 0 by 2 doesn't change it. So um, that can just stay the same. And we get x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Uh, now. If we think about that, what would uh, times to make two and add to make three, just doing our uh, quadratic trinomials, just nice monic ones. Um, so it's x plus two, x plus one, isn't it? Equals zero. 
and then we've just got a bit of null factor law, just uh, pretend that zero looks nice. Um, and we get, well, x is either equal to negative two to make that statement above true, or x equals minus one. Okay, so we now have the values of x for the intersection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those. I'm gonna use that equation for the line, that one, uh, y equals x plus two. I'm gonna substitute those. Substitute into y equals x, what is it again, x plus two. Uh, so that I can get the corresponding y values. So for the first one, if you put in minus two, you get y equals zero. And um, when you put in minus one, you got minus one plus two, so y equals one. So the intersections are at um, negative two comma zero and minus one, one. So now we've got our points of intersection. Say this were a real world example, like for example, uh, it was the, uh, the paths of two aeroplanes in your own air traffic controller. Um, you might wanna work out where those points of intersection are if they're two paths. And then all you need to do is go back to your parametric equations here and make sure that they don't go through those points when the value for T is the same, because then you would have a collision and you'd have a big mess to clean up. So uh, that's it for how you can find the points of intersection of uh, two sets of parametric equations.